I guess in like today's era, you know how um, like buying a house, it's like unrealistic to buy like a house in Tulsa. So I kind of want to know like um, the belief in the Islamic way as far as like interest. Interest, excellent. Realistic. No problem. Yeah. So first thing, riba, which is uh, interest, is haram, mutlaqan, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's not really an option, right? Is there ways to buy without interest in our time and country and everything? Yes, I bought my house without interest. Oh, so really? okay. yeah, alhamdulillah, cash. So okay. it definitely can be done, um, but it's not easy, right? Just no, like it's not. it's not buying a house in general is not easy. Let me yes. give you a, a understanding about interest and how it works, right? Okay. So let's say a house in San Diego. What's the average house in San Diego? 500,000. Yeah. Uh, like you're lucky if it's 500,000, but okay, let's take that. So $500,000. Yes. Right? A good interest rate, 0.05%, right? I mean, on average, sometimes they're really low, sometimes they're higher, but let's take that. That means you're paying 25,000 in interest every year, mm -hmm. right? Times that by a 30 year loan. So your interest is $750,000, right? Not yes. the principal. Now add your original 500,000 back and that house costs you 1.25 million, you see? So you see what interest does, people don't realize it because they're just like, I'm just paying every month, but it takes up the price so high you become a slave, yes. right? Basically if you miss a payment what happens your down payment everything that you put into it is gone your 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 house is gone a hundred percent of whatever money you had that into it was all taken by the bank the house is sold the whole price is taken by the bank you're left with no money no credit not able to get a cell phone because you don't have credit and then your wife leaves you because you broke right so 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 see that system how it how it enslaves a people right yes as a Muslim when you buy a house without interest for example if you want to leave work and go memorize the Quran for a year or go learn Islamic or Ulum for a year, you can. And that's how I did it. Like, I, you know, I didn't have a, a loan payment on my head, so I could go and study. But when you become a slave to the system, then you can. So how can you buy a house, right? One, you can, you can try to save up, right? Like save, don't, you know, a lot of guys, they go and buy expensive cars and big TVs and this, when they really should be saving that money. Save up until you have enough, buy something small, buy a condo, buy a, buy a small place. If you don't want to live in it, rent it out. Save the rent monies, and then when, you, when you're ready to buy, sell that house, and then all that money that you've been saving from the rent you're getting, put that back in, buy a nice house, right? Buy a piece of land. Here in San Diego, if you go east, you can buy a piece of land for 40,000, 50,000. Borrego Springs, you could buy it for like 5,000, right? Buy a piece of land, save some money, build some rooms there, go rent it out, or go live in it. Right? Go to Ramon or move out. In all those ways, you can find ways. If not, Habitat for Humanity has a program. If your income level is at a certain level, you go and buy, you only pay the principal. They'll pay all the interest, they'll do that. You buy it on principal only. I know brothers that have done it, right? Okay. As a family, collect your money together. Right? If you tell your brothers, your uncles, whatever, you know, or brothers in Islam, collect your money together, buy a house, keep collecting, keep buying for the next and next. I know brothers that have done it that way. Okay. There are many ways you can do it, but interest is Islamically incorrect and financially is bad. It's, you know, something that you're going to end up paying 1.2 million for a $500,000 house. Okay. What else? Um, I guess like further on going to that question is like, what about your belief in like real estate, like owning properties? It's good. Owning property is good. I own properties. Okay. Right? Uh, but doing it without interest, right? Okay. And I know a lot of brothers that own a lot of properties. They've they're not millionaires, they didn't come from money, they bought their properties cash, so you can do it. Okay. Come on, those were easy, man. You gotta hit me with some hard ones. Um, okay, I got, I got that one. Go for it. Um, how would you explain Qadr? Qadr, excellent. Um, I have long lessons on it, so I'm just gonna give you a summarized answer, right? Okay. So, Allah knows everything. So there is an aspect of Qadr that has to do with the knowledge of Allah. Okay? And that is unique to Allah. 
right? So there's nothing new to Allah, nothing in the past is hidden from Allah, nothing that's going on is unknown to Allah. Allah knows what has happened, what is happening, what will happen, what could have happened but didn't happen. Alright? Okay. That part of Qadr doesn't change. Is this ha because Allah knows everything, right? Then there is the aspect of Qadr of your decisions. Allah does not force a decision upon you. So, right now you're here and you're learning. You made that decision, right? And Allah will reward you for that decision. Today is Sunday, both of you could have gone to a bar and you could be getting, well, I don't know if bars are open, but you could, you know, you could be getting, yeah. you, you could go to a liquor store right now, buy a bunch of alcohol, sit in this park on the other side and drink, mm -hmm. right? That's your choice. If you made that choice, you would get punished for it. And when you make this choice, you will get rewarded for it. Allah does not force you to make either choice okay? okay but Allah knows what choice you will make and that's from the knowledge of Allah okay. good that's pretty good there are aspects of Qadr where you have no choice right for example where were you born in Philippines did you have a choice no so that is Qadr but in that you will not be rewarded or punished Right? Okay. Allah will not say you, you're going to go to heaven because you were born in the Philippines because that wouldn't be fair to the rest of us that weren't. Yeah. Right? And Allah will not say you're going to hell because you're born in the Philippines because that wouldn't be fair to, the, to you. Right? Allah will not judge you on your skin color or your eye color or your hair color or, or your genetics. None of that. Like It's not like the chosen people, the Jews. Okay, if you're born in this race, you're chosen. Not nah. In Islam, we don't have that concept. Right? Those things, will it rain today or not, is not our choice. That is Qadr. But we will not be rewarded or punished for that. Okay. But those things where Allah gives you ikhtiyar, Allah gives you a choice, then Allah will take you to account. See? That was easy too, man. Come on. Where's the hard one? Okay. Uh, do you... Uh in your du'a, do you pray for patience? Of course. You know, Allah is with those that are patient. And we should ask Allah to give us patience and ask Allah not to test us with the hardship that we can't handle. And always in your du'a, ask Allah for being steadfast on the religion. Ask Allah for the best in dunya and akhirah. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, when you make du'a, ask for Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. Ask for the highest Jannah. Don't be like, oh Allah, just let me get into the bottom Jannah. No, Allah's treasures are, are unnecessary. Limited, so ask for the best. Um, about as I learned differently, um, I did learn about in the beginning. I do pray for patience, but then later on, uh, I think I watched a YouTube video, video or something, and it said, "Don't ask for patience, but ask to be spared." What's your thoughts on that? So, so, so those are two different things, right? Okay. One is don't ask to be tested. Right? Don't ask oh Allah, put a test and make me patient for it. No. Ask Allah, don't test me, like I said, right? But always ask Allah to be patient when the test does come. Everybody will be tested. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, do you think you will enter Jannah without being tested as those before you? So that means everybody will be tested. So when you are tested, tested, ask Allah to make you patient. But don't ask Allah for hardships. Don't ask Allah, oh Allah, test me. Oh Allah, give me hardship in dunya. No. Ask Allah, Rabbana atina fit dunya hasan. Give me the best, give me in this world good, and the hereafter give me good. So ask Allah for ease, but always be patient and ask Allah to make you patient when the hardship comes. Cool? Um, I guess just kind of on the topic of like uh, marrying your wife. And I don't understand. Marrying like, your wife? If she's already your wife, why well, are you going to marry her? Like, <laughs> like, uh, marrying like someone in the Abrahamic belief. Okay. So I just kind of want to talk about that. So. The best thing is for you to marry a Muslim woman. Okay. Right? Because when you are getting married, you should base your marriage on taqwa, right? on, on the piety, on the, on the awareness of Allah, on, on, on common goals and rules. So the best thing, get yourself a good pious Muslim wife, get a pious wife, get the most pious one you can get and, and have a good life. Right? In certain circumstances, it is permissible to marry from the people of the book. Right? But there are conditions for that. Right? There are situations for that. Right? And then there are certain 
rules you have to lay down, right? <coughs> meaning the house has to be run according to Islamic etiquette. Meaning, for example, the people of Brooklyn are not supposed to drink alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. But today, most of them do, from Jews and Christians, even though we find some verses and all that, and some Christians that are more religious don't, but majority of them do. So let's say you get married to a, a Christian woman or a Jewish woman, and then you're sitting at home with your kids, and she's out there busting the vodka bottle. You know, how are you going to raise kids like that, right? Many of them, they gamble, even though they're not supposed to. But, you know, you go to the casinos, and you got people with big old crosses rolling them dice, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I used to go to churches where the priests used to give us alcohol, and he used to drink, and I think I was 15 at the time, so I'm pretty sure that was illegal, but, you know, <laughs> welcome to you know, anyway, yeah. um, right? So, so if you look at that, it's, it's a big problem, right? Yeah. But let's say you're in a situation where you can't get a Muslim wife, right? And then you need to marry from that Halul Kitab. Tayyib, but now you're going to have to lay down some foundations. The kids have to be raised Muslim. You have to make sure that the house is run under Islamic way of running. You have to make sure she's actually pious in that religion. She's not like, you know, I'm Christian, but I'm going to go hit the strip clubs and, you know, whatever, right? Uh, I mean, you have to make sure she's actually a pious and she has to be interested in Islam. So then you hope that when she sees good manners from you as a Muslim and you get to learn, she will also become a Muslim. But the best thing, marry a Muslim wife. Okay. So would you get punished if you married anything outside the Abrahamic faith? Uh, so in Islam, you cannot marry for a man, okay. a woman from other than Ahlul Kitab. Okay. Right? So you cannot marry a Buddhist or, you know, atheist and so on. Of course, that's haram. Yes. And for a woman, she's not allowed to marry except a Muslim man. Okay. Okay. Um, this is my other question. What's your opinion on the topic of like investing? Is it like nothing wrong with investing? Okay. But what, what, what do we mean by investing, right? Let's say Victor sets up a ice cream shop, and I say, okay, I'm gonna invest with you. You run the shop. I'll put money, and then we'll split the money. You know, we sit down Islamically, make a contract, get two witnesses. Yes. Alhamdulillah, nothing wrong with that. Okay. But if you invest in a bank that deals with riba, or you invest <coughs> in uh, Anheuser Busch that makes alcohol, then yes. that's haram because okay. the product's haram. If you invest and try to to get interest riba from it that's haram okay. but investing in itself alhamdulillah it's good okay what about like investing in the stock market stock market's an interesting ball game right so okay. you have some stocks that don't have any aspect of haram in them mm -hmm. like let's say you invest in a company that makes um, syringes for you know medical use right mm -hmm. alhamdulillah nothing wrong with that okay. right but if you invest in a stock where they give you dividends that are interest based which hardly any of them do anymore then that would be haram if you invest in a stock that their business is haram then that would be haram okay. if you invest in a stock that makes money off of interests in one of their revenue streams and that would be haram now if you invest in a stock and the others that are invested like the company and others deal with interest that doesn't affect you right your investment has to do with the product that's being sold right? but here you have to research the type of stock okay cool <coughs> Do you have any more questions? Ask him about the Khabib. Yeah. What's what's your opinion on Khabib, the UFC fighter? Khabib, he's a good it's fighter. Career, it's like you know, I feel like it's haram. You know, he fights people. Uh, uh, so so his career in what he does is Islamically not correct, right? Because there's many aspects to it, you know. But as a fighter, he's a really good fighter, oh, yeah. right? Is he a role model people should look up to as people are making YouTube and, and, and you know, well, why would you look up to a UFC fighter? Because he can punch somebody really hard. Uh, I mean, you have scholars, you have people who are pious, you have du'a, those are the people you should look up to. Okay. We as Muslims always want to look for rappers, actors, sports stars as role models, right? Yeah. Which is just, I mean, it's foolishness because that's not where you're supposed to be looking for role models. Having said that, amongst a lot of the UFC fighters, mashallah, he's done a lot of good. And he prays, he fasts, he, his wife, from what I heard, wears the full whatever, you know. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be harsh on the brother because alhamdulillah, at least he's trying. But at the same time, I think brothers have made a mistake by making him into like a role model, which again, we should really be encouraging the Muslim youth to be, to take like scholars and pious people as role models. Okay. But he's a good fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu salam ala Rasulillah. We're here at Balboa Park in San Diego, California, uh, doing our da'wah program here, alhamdulillah. And we're joined with our brother Victor. Uh, alhamdulillah, who like you, many of you used to watch the videos online. 
Alhamdulillah, now that he has the ability, he's coming out and joining us uh, in person. And we just want to benefit from Brother Victor to know about how he benefited from the videos and what encouraged him and how he feels being out here doing the da'wah. So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide many of you to, in your cities to come out and, and do the da'wah as well. I'm going to turn this over to our Brother Victor. Thank you. So I benefited a lot. Like I remember watching the videos. I um, learned a lot. Um, and then I thought about when I was at home that since uh, maybe I should do like the Sahaba and start giving Dawah and spread Islam in San Diego. So I really want to see Islam grow in the United States. So that's one of my dreams. So um, I'm, I'm just praying, I've been praying that Allah, Allah just grant us like just that victory just to make Islam grow. And that's what I learned from the videos I watched because they're so encouraging. Like um, you get to meet, meet people, um, spread the proper message of Islam because what we see in the news is very incorrect. Um, I think it's very biased and prejudiced at times. So we see that with the news in France and we see that with the news like in Britain. So it's good to spread the, the proper message of Islam. And I think uh, seeing the Dawah helped me on the, on the channel, encouraged me, like I got to learn a lot. Um, just see how Dawah was, um, sorry, Dawah was being done in San Diego it was very encouraging. And then, um, just be able to be a part of it and reach other people and just to come down and to, to, just to let just to spread the message of Islam to different people and to help it grow in the, in the California and the United States is important for me. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give our brother Victor Istiqama, steadfast us on the truth and to protect us all on the straight path and to encourage everybody else out there to inshallah support the da'wah any way you can, forward the videos, like, comment, uh, in your own city, start up your own da'wah tables, get the training through the videos, see what's going on. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today that Allah makes us as the means of spreading the true light of, of Islam throughout the world, starting in America, all over the world. Allahumma taqabbal minna wa minkum wa jazakumullahu khayran.